Hi, I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm a, a retired financial advisor, and I have, I'm the host of this channel, Best of Us in Retirement. And I think I've pretty much mastered retirement, and I'm, I'm happy with the position I'm in. But I guess I was thinking, why should you take advice from me? You don't know who I am. You don't know a whole lot about me. And uh, so I want to share with you uh, my financial situation and maybe give you some insight to, to my life. As I said, I'm a retired financial advisor. I actually uh, didn't retire. I was forced out of the business. Um, I had a, a good friend at one point when I was in my 30s said, Kerry, you're not a good employee. Uh, you don't follow the rules and you always think you've got a better way to do it. Well, I was a financial advisor um, in, in my final career with Ameriprise Financial. And I believed that um, they were doing it wrong because they had an 80% failure rate with new advisors. And I thought that what they should do is create something of a mentor program where they could take their su successful advisors and then supply them with um, new people that could help the, the successful advisor grow their business and then and thus create a job within or a training ground for new advisors. Well, the, the problem with that was that I promoted that within the Ameriprise system. Basically, and what I didn't realize at the time was I was basically promoting a plan to take out middle management. If, if I, in fact, was training uh, these new advisors and, there were, and, and they weren't, what was the value of them? Also, that they had built a franchise system that the larger my business was, the bigger my, um, my share in commissions and, and compensation was. It started when you were, when you were small, uh, you got about 51% of whatever you generated. But once you got big, like I was, uh, you got 92%. Well, where do you think that other 40% came from? It came off the paychecks of middle management. So middle management didn't like me, and I wasn't smart enough to recognize at the time what I was doing and that I was um, cutting them out. And so th as we got into compliance, uh, I was never one to dot all my I's and cross all my T's. They found that as a means by which they could make my life miserable and uh, force me out of the business. And they successfully did that. So I sold my business when I was uh, uh, 61 years old in 2005. And as I said, um, like most entrepreneurs, most of my assets were wrapped up into that business. And as I'll show you, uh, I sold it and took a 10-year payout, but I didn't have a lot of investable assets at that time. I had taken everything that I made and invested it back into my enterprise, my financial planning business. But what I, what I, after thinking of this, I thought, I've gone a strange route to get to where I am, and I'm asking people like you to have faith in the knowledge that I share. So it made sense to me that you know where I came from, how I got there, and, and what my qualifications are. And so I want to share this with you. Okay, this is a recap of my retirement on the graph that I use in some of my other videos. I retired when I was 61 in 2005, and uh, our Social Security amounted to mine at 18000 a year, and need is at half of that at 9000 So we had $27,000 worth of income, but I had sold my business, so I had an income, and I took a payout on it over 10 years. So for 10 years, I had an income of $172,800. Like most entrepreneurs, that was my wealth. That was my, uh, other than, as you see here, I had uh, roughly $300,000 in a 401k, uh, a solo 401k. 
Uh, and then the, the balance of my net worth was my house and a $500,000 life insurance policy. So that's where we started. Um, as you can see, my, um, my annual expenses were high. Uh, I was living well. I still had a mortgage on my house. And uh, we were living the life of an entrepreneur uh, with an <laughs> income of $172,800, um, a, a good annual income. And uh, our expenses didn't really slow down until uh, we paid off the mortgage on our house and uh, then, then they came down a bit. But we continued to l l uh, live a good life. And as you can see, uh, at some years, I did not make as much as I spent. So that took money out of the non-qualified assets. This is the Christmas web. If you've been with me before um, in my videos, I wrote a children's book. Uh, I had it manufactured in um, China and shipped to here. And so I put about $150,000 in it over a three year period and um, didn't really make any money off of it. It was, it was a losing proposition. So we get down to uh, 2014. This is when we lost our daughter to cancer. That's when the businesses paid out and um, we were hitting some deficits. So <clears throat> I basically went and uh, got involved in real estate. And then down here you see is when I got involved in YouTube. And uh, my side gig income started to increase. So we're about here right now, um, making about 180,000 off of this. I've started to take my required minimum distributions. In this, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using this factor over here, the RMD factor and I'm dividing it into my qualified account. So as you can see here, uh, the bulk of our assets are still in the, um, the uh, 401ks, IRAs, and I'm actually adding to those um, because I am generating business over here. Um, and, and so that gives you an idea of how I manage our income. And as you can see, what, what's kind of cool about it is if everything kind of stays the same and our expenses, as you can see, I'm, I'm projecting they're gonna continue to go up based on inflation and based on our lifestyle. Actually, I think this, this is probably a little excessive. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that we'll get up to $200,000, particularly at age 98. Uh, but what it does is it gives you the ability or it gives me the ability to project out what is my net worth going to be if I keep at this pace. Now, another thing that this forced me to do was look realistically at my, at my uh, YouTube business. How long can I continue to do this? So I basically arbitrarily said that at, uh, what is this, at roughly 82 years old, I'm going to be making off of this business a little about $450,000 and I'll sell it as uh, much as I sold my financial planning business. And what I'll do is establish a payout. And as you see here, I figured that payout at about $268,000, $269,000 for the rest of my life. Uh, someone, whether it be a relative or someone, maybe one of you, uh, will come and say, hey, I can take that over. I can breathe new life into your business and, and I'll sell it. So that's kind of how I look at retirement. Um, this, this is a conservative estimate of what I will be making off of the YouTube channel based again on my health and, and the situation I find myself in. Um, so that's kind of the, oh, then the other factor I had is back here when I was traveling a lot and not paying a whole lot of attention to my investment portfolio, I, I, I was making about 5% on it. Um, conservatively, I have entered that now that I'm, my assets will grow at about 15%. In fact, they have grown substantially greater than that, uh, but that gives me 
a means by which to project what in fact uh, the rest of my life financially is going to look at. And that gives me a lot of comfort, I guess. So let's talk a little bit more about this. Okay, as you see, I, I didn't, I had, I had a good income from that payout, but I didn't have a lot of assets. You know, we, we, we hear people say, well, uh, can you retire on a million dollars worth of assets? I only had $300,000 in my uh, IRA, even though I was a financial advisor. My assets were wrapped up in the business. Um, and then the, the mistake that I, I guess you could say I made was that uh, I had a very expensive lifestyle. Nita and I, upon in 2005, 06, 09, whatever, we traveled all over the world. And we went to China. I spent a month in China. Uh, we then came home and the next year we went to Vietnam and Cambodia. Um, we, we spent time all over Europe, wonderful times in, in uh, Italy, learned uh, in, in France and learned wines and acquired a taste for some of the finest foods. We spent a lot of money. And then we lost our daughter to cancer and that was a setback. Uh, I also did the, um, the, this is, I mentioned in there, the, the Christmas web that I lost about 150,000. This was, uh, this is the product that I had made in China. And um, so it, it was quite elaborate and it just didn't sell like I had hoped it would. In fact, if you find a, a, <laughs> a charity or a cause this Christmas that you could use some of those, just let me know. I can, we can work out something that I can uh, empty my garage of them. So that's who I am. That's how I got to where I am. I think the smartest thing I did, and, and I did it as a result of a response to losing my daughter, I had to have a purpose. I had to come up with a reason to go on. I did a lot of self-searching. I, I chronicle that self-searching in this book. Uh, find happiness by discovering who you are and why you are you. This is the process I went through to get from where I was to where I am. And, and it, it, it truly changed my life. If you are interested in that, there's a link to it in the description, or you can just go to uh, Amazon Books and type in my name and you'll find it there. So that's who I am. Um, I think I have learned a lot. I think I can help you learn a lot. Uh, I would love to take you down the path I have gone. You, you can see that uh, as a result of this YouTube channel, uh, my life is full now. I, I, I enjoy what I do. I, I pursue my health vigorously and, and running. And those are, those are my track shoes. I'm the fastest um, 80, no, 75 to 80 year old in the state of Alabama. I run the 50, the 100, and the 200 meter dashes. And, and to stay in shape every uh, three times a week, I go out and run two miles on, on the trails of uh, um, Jamison Park. So that's what I'm all about. But I, again, I felt, I felt compelled to give you a pec better picture of who I am and what I'm all about. And, and then you can decide if you want to follow my path or learn from me and we can share and grow together. Okay, I'll be talking to you again soon.